I will personally fight anyone who says anything bad about this book. Well, that was a bit aggressive. Hi, I'm Isabel. Welcome back to my channel. As an avid reader, as an English major, I am used to challenge myself with complex and challenging books. But nothing could really have prepared me for the experience that is reading Solito by Javier Zamora. This is a September release, which I don't know why the buzz didn't reach me. I am very disappointed of Bookstagram, but somehow it landed on my lab. Well, metaphorically, I listened to the audiobook, which I totally recommend. But today we are talking about this. Solito is a memoir, the perspective of nine-year-old Javier. A kid from San Salvador that wants to reunite with his parents in the US. So he's going to go initially on a two week trip that turns into a two month trip, a bit more, through Guatemala, Mexico, and the Sonora Desert with three attempts and no family members around him. For those nine weeks, Javier was passed down from stranger to stranger. He had to go on a boat, he had to walk, he had to cross the desert and he was detained in the ICE facilities all in 1999. I really have no words to review or even talk about a memoir like Solito. And you know, I have the most difficult times reviewing memoirs already as memoirs are personal explorations of memory. Therefore, it's not up to me to say if it feels authentic or not because I have no idea what the experience is. It's a very, I guess, healing practice for the author. And as readers, I don't feel like we are entitled to any part of the story at all, especially in those that deal with so traumatic events like the ones in Solito. And I would even be cautious to talk about the authors of memoirs just as authors, because most of them are deep in looking for excavating memories. These are not superficial memories, but Javier Zamora is such an author. He is a poet and that poetry transpasses the page because it's not only that he tells us the fact and reconstructs what must be the most traumatic weeks of his life, but he also shows us the smells, the imagery, the repetition, it creates such a holistic experience that you as a reader or as a listener, as I was, are just in his position, in his innocence of a child, but also with the adult perspective of what he's actually going to encounter in this journey. These excavation sites of the psyche, memoirs in general, are very delicate subjects when looking at book reviews. So I want to address the, the structure of this particular memoirs and then a bit about the reviews. In terms of structure, you can see that Javier Zamora as an author frames the story as this is not a memoir about his whole life. This is a memoir about the journey, El Cruce, the migration story. But it is also framed in a positive light with the idea of letting human kindness shine through of, and also with the exploration again of the innocent voice of a child. For example, there are instances when Javier is instructed to not look at what's happening around him or he doesn't fully understand the grasp of sexual innuendos or just how much danger they are because we are still in the focalization of the child voice. It's not that Javier Zamora, the adult, doesn't understand or cannot I don't know, deduce what was happening at that moment, but he chooses not to because he chooses to keep us with him as a kid. Which again, this is a kid that doesn't know how to tie his shoes, that is afraid of using a toilet, that is afraid of the ocean, and his first big task is to cross the ocean in a boat. So I want to point out how this childlike voice is so well done. It is really done with mastery and probably the result of a lot of therapy sessions that unlock this inner child trauma and how this child was still be was still able to retain a lot of innocence and positive views about the world about trusting adults 
and just knowing that his parents were going to take care of him even though he couldn't remember his father's face as he had left the country because of the civil war in San Salvador when he was about two years old and his mother had left him also when he was around five. And again, Zamora as a poet incorporates smells, sensations, the repetition of common phrases or the mantra that he was keeping up as a child when going through traumatic experiences and all of this powerful imagery that as a reader or just as someone that is experiencing this story, you cannot put it down. Even when I would stop my audiobook because I would need to give myself some pauses to kind of reflect on my feelings, I couldn't stop thinking about him and all the people in the journey and all of others whose stories doesn't get told like this. And it's so important, yet I've seen some bad reviews and I think those bad reviews are about the plot and the linguistic devices. Let's talk about plot. Again, I am cautious about using the word plot because that is pertinent of fiction and this is a non-fiction book. Therefore, Samora is very careful about how he wants to structure his memoir. As I said before, it's about the migration story. So we start in San Salvador so we can have a full grasp of what this child home-like country life looks like and what is he's planning on encountering. As a child, he thinks the USA is the place of the movies, the McDonald's, the Toys R Us, but more importantly, it's the place where his parents live and thrive. He's being raised by his grandparents and his aunt. He is the best in his class and his big dreams are not about economic gain or anything like that. It's just about family reunification. In several interviews with author Javier Zamora, that I'm gonna link down below in the description box. He talks about why writing this book and why now, when he previously had a collection of poetry targeting this type of drama when he thought he had healed, but he couldn't actually fill up the page. He was kind of hiding behind poetry instead of delving in right into the memory. And he mentions how intentional it is that the book ends with the reunification with the parents. And you might wonder, what, what happens next? This is rubbish. I don't get to know what happens afterwards, but I believe this is a revolutionary way of looking at the migration story because we always look at either they die, they surrender, or they achieve the American dream. And Javier Zamora, just for you to know, has had um, scholarships in Harvard and Stanford and had an amazing education and he's alive and he's well and you could look at this story and think of uh, inspiration uh everything was worth its story but the way that the book ends completely gives protagonism to the migration story to the journey and is not diminished by the destination as it often is portrayed in media especially because the question of was it worth it? Is the American dream worth it? It's not ever addressed. And I don't know if it's because Javier Zamora as a 29, 30 year old man doesn't know, which is totally valid, or it's because nine year old narrator Javier doesn't know either. Now I want to address the linguistic and stylistic aspects because I saw a lot of bad reviews addressing this issue or seeing it as an issue and I thought I should mention it. I understand a lot of people don't understand the difference between fiction and non-fiction and how Javier Zamora has no control of what happened to his life. You know, the facts are not what he controls. He controls how the narrative is told, but to the argument that I saw out there that this book feels repetitive, and the same thing happens over and over again, or the same dialogue is repeated. Well, that's the point. He tried to cross three times the desert where there's nothing. There is fence after fence, the heat, the dryness, the need for water. It happens all the time. He was a child depending on others for everything for their decisions, for the timing. He only had to wait and see what was happening as he was a kid. 
in Zamora as an author is relieving the most dramatic nights of his life over and over again in this excavation project for us to have this book in our hands. Of course, it is repetitive. I don't know if you have never experienced any type of like trauma that comes back and psychical motions and spiraling and just the nature of what the book talks about asks for this repetition for you to understand what is happening how is nauseating and i think it's done beautifully it's not not entertaining and if you think that well i don't know what to tell you but it's more it's beyond being entertaining it's very authentic and truthful to his experience which takes me to the other type of bad reviews that I saw out there. And this one was the one that pissed me off the most. I saw people complaining about how much Spanish was in the book and how it affected the reading experience and how they wish an editor would have cut some of the Spanish out. I understand that you are monolingual or at least you, I feel like even if you speak other languages, you wouldn't have this complaint. If you want an authentic portrayal of what happened to this nine-year-old kid in 1989 crossing the desert, that has to be Spanish. This kid didn't understand any English. He didn't speak any English. He was being gunned down by border patrol officers that scream in English to him to drop to his knees. Of course, it's going to be influenced by Spanish. Because how do you even conciliate going back to your nine-year-old self that doesn't speak any English and write the whole thing in English? It would have been so, not unauthentic, but not as rich as the text that we have now. And I can tell you, I listened to Solito in English, read by Javier Zamora. Most of the Spanish terms that are part of the book are terms of endearment are things that repeat over and over again, like slang, that once you translate it once or you get it from the cues of the context, you are good to go. That could never authentically translate to English because it's not the same. And you can, I, I guess, as an adult, you can think about difficulties. You can think about the physical pain, but also the mental pain of going to a place or facing people that are speaking a different language than you who are trying to harm you or they are looking dangerous with their weapons and you have no clue what's happening. It's daunting. I can tell you, I fight for my life every freaking day here in Switzerland because I don't speak German. I'm a grown ass adult and I can speak English and most people understand me and I can get by. And if that is so taxing to me mentally and physically, you have no idea how it would be for a child. I can only imagine. Of course, the book is going to have some Spanish and it could only make it richer. And if that is enough for you to put it down, then you're not valuing the subject at all and you really need a reality check. I think you will be fine using Google Translate, you know? Like compared to the immensity of the situation happening in the book you can just google it like it's not that hard it's not really that hard and if that is enough for you to put the book down i'm i'm kind of sorry for you honestly and do i want to make everything about me not at all not at all but i did finish this like two days ago i've been through some stuff i haven't had time to digest it i probably cried more than five times listening to this thing. And I think that it's important for me to recognize why it hits me so hard in a specific way that probably not even Javier Zamora expected. I am an American citizen. I was born in the US. I grew up in the Tijuana border, the Mexican side. As a child, crossing the border for me was the most normal thing ever. It was totally part of my routine. And I think of the border as one of the key defining elements of my whole identity. I guess 
as a kid, I didn't fully grasp that I was crossing to another country. There was so much overlap and the life on the border felt more authentic to me than the life of the center of Mexico or the south of Mexico. Then, I don't know, I feel like it was such a specific place to be at in growing up that it belongs to you. I think the border belongs to me in a certain way that is totally wrong, of course, and it has inflicted so much pain and I don't really believe in borders. Yet, it's so important to my personality and my identity. In the news, I would see about migrants, about South Americans, about the Mojados, and I wouldn't understand why were they invading my city? Why couldn't they cross? And why we're so obsessed with crossing if there was nothing out of the ordinary on the other side? As I grew older, I understood what was happening. I got the broader context. And if you are one of the ones that think that the United States have no reason to address this issue is because you don't fully know how much they had intervened in Latin American countries and their, how they have supported with weapons and money and drugs to create the state of fear, which makes people flee their country. Um, as I was saying, I feel the border is kind of part of me and that it's mine. And growing up, knowing how many people were losing their lives there on my territory, you know, like on my land, on my border, I felt so heartbroken. In 2014, I remember clearly the outrage in the American news about the unaccompanied child migrant crisis which many have since argued that helped Donald Trump's campaign in 2016 because of how many stories were coming up of children that were crossing the border alone. They were turning themselves into border patrols so they could be sent to New York City and be in a court of law that would grant them the refugee status so they can reunite with their families, but most of them will face mass deportation to their countries of origin. Another book that rose during this time period was Lost Children Archive by Valeria Luiselli, a Mexican author living in New York City that was in very close counters with these children as she served as a translator in this court of law. This is a fictional book that kind of documents what was happening on the American side and how the news of these children were encountered. It also is a travel narrative through the desert of the US and it's a road trip and it also talks about marriage and identity and is one of my favorite books. Javier Zamora also remembers this time period in one interview when he says that during this time, as he was still undocumented, was so filled with rage that only in 2014 people realized that there were children crossing the border alone when we have always known that this was a case and we have always known that this was something important to talk about, but it was never talked about in the news. However, the news coverage was truly dehumanizing, desensitized, and saw these children as the biggest problem in America. This is why I think this book really spoke to me as uh, I was born in 1997. I grew up in the border. I've heard about all the stories. When I was nine years old, I was in a Catholic school just as Javier. And yet he crossed three countries alone, facing hunger and fear. And he, he made it. But at what cost? Yet, where are all these other stories? Where, where is... What happened to all of these children? They cannot all be Javier. 
most of them die. So I want to talk about now why Javier survived. And I guess this is just my reading. He probably has another reason why he survived. But I believe he largely survived due to human kindness. He wasn't accompanied by his relatives. He found family on the way. Patricia, Carla, and Chino were other migrants from San Salvador, a different town though, that all, they all knew each other. Patricia was taking her daughter Carla with her, a 12 year old girl, and Chino was probably 19 at the time and knew them, they were all going to Virginia. Yet, they opened their hearts to Javier, that was alone, and they protect him. Because when Javier couldn't walk, Chino carried him. And when Javier needed comfort, Patricia gave it to him. And when Javier was scared, Carla told him everything was going to be okay. They saw this child being left by the coyote that his family had trusted and paid more money than others. who was left abandoned there as the coyote split very early on in the journey. And they extended him the most important and precious currency you can give anyone, which is kindness. And I don't know if you would do that. I don't know if I would do that. They put their lives on the line. They share their very scarce resources with this kid. And they made sure that he was okay, that he was fed, that he had water, and that he was alive. And as Javier said in an interview, his parents called them his angels, but calling them angels, they part of their humanity and how they didn't have to do what they did and they still chose to do the right thing. This is why Solito by Javier Zamora and this review by Isabel Jimenez is dedicated to these three individuals, everyone that has crossed, that is crossing, and that will cross. Millions of people had lost their lives this way. And that is only the beginning of the hell that they have to endure if they eventually arrive to the US. Just know that Javier and I are always thinking about them. So you might be wondering, if this book destroyed me, why am I recommending it to everyone? This is not trauma porn. This is not me being, oh, if you want a good cry, read this. You have to prepare for this. Or at least I had, and I didn't. But literature is meant to challenge us. Art is meant to be political. It's meant to be raw. It's meant to move our most sensible fibers. I can say Solito is probably the best book I've read this year or that I've heard. And I believe this should be mandatory read for every student in the US and Latin America, the 400 pages that it is, and it feels short and it feels incomplete because this is only the story about Javier, not about everyone else's. It is such a powerful and important story that I cannot stand anyone saying anything bad or people DNFing it or anything like that. It has to be mandatory. What if we stop assigning the catcher in the ride and we assign Solito? I assure you, so many lives will be changed. So many. That is my main wish for this book. I wish it becomes mandatory read. I hope it becomes an American classic. I hope we never forget it. I hope it's stuck into our collective minds forever. That is my personal wish. Yet, I also share Javier's wish. That is that this book will reunite him with Patricia, Carla, and Chino. And I hope their lives are as amazing as they can be. And I hope I get to meet Javier Zamora one day. So that is all for me. That is a review, I'm sorry. Feels like every time we read a memoir here, we have a very serious video, but that's just life. And we shouldn't be afraid to put
put herself out there, to put her emotions and learn something. Migration is a very important topic to me. Latin American people are very important to me. Children experiences are very important to me as well. Please check Javier Zamora, his work as a poet, his interviews, support him as any way you can. You can buy Solito, you can listen to Solito. Um, it came out in September, so it should be, if it's not in your bookstore right now, you should be able to find it somewhere. I am Isabel. Thanks for watching. Keep reading, and when you're not, follow me on all my social media link down below. I will be seeing you next week with another book review, and hopefully you're going to give it a chance to Solito because I can already feel it's probably going to be my best book of 2022 and for a long time. Okay, well, bye!